Don't you love it when you just find out about a movie and then you watch it a week later and it turns out to be probably one of your favorite movies of the year, if not your favorite? Let's review Dark Harvest. Dark Harvest stars Casey Likes, Emery Crutchfield, Dustin Kalthamer, and is directed by David Slade. What's up guys, welcome to a brand new 2023 review. We're gonna review Dark Harvest, David Slade, definitely one of my favorite horror directors. He directed 30 Days of Night. Now this movie is based on a book, Dark Harvest. Um, what I love about this movie is that it captures the Halloween vibe, the Halloween atmosphere beautifully. I mean, getting that right out of the way, the cinematography in this movie is absolutely stunning gorgeous there were so many moments throughout this movie you'll have these shots that just stick out like it could easily be like a desktop wallpaper you know that's this movie's just filled with shots like that but it's also a really great story so the story let me give you a quick plot synopsis this is one of those movies that's based on this small town you know next to a cornfield they have this annual tradition where all the um, the teenagers, the, the, the young boys, they have to go out and find this character called Sawtooth Jack. Old Sawtooth Jack is going to rise from the cornfields. It's got to be stopped. Kill or be killed. If that thing isn't dead by midnight, this whole town is going straight to hell! Uh, and he's this lanky looking scarecrow like figure with a pumpkin on his head he's pretty much a creature and the object of the game is they have to kill him and by doing that it like uh protects the crops you know and uh it's just really good for the town it's a really weird and strange plot uh but it's perfect for like halloween time and at the beginning of the movie you see this event unfolding uh, you know, and then it goes forward a year. Uh, our main character is Richie. His brother, uh, he won the competition at the beginning of the movie. And so then after he wins, his family wins this, uh, you know, this money. And they get this nice house and he gets a car. And then his brother leaves town, right? He just wants to get out of the town. And so that's kind of the setup. And then for, you know, the rest of the movie, which takes place a year later, it seems like his younger brother is tormented by the town and the love and adoration that his brother had. We've seen quite a few movies like this too where you have siblings. One of them, everybody loves. They're kind of like the golden child. And then the other one is kind of like thrown away. You know, nobody likes him. He's kind of like the black sheep of the family. That's what Richie is. You're definitely gonna get an outsider's type vibe from this movie. It's set in uh, 1963. And I like movies like this because you definitely have to put more work in terms of like the, uh, the set design and everything. You have to feel like you're in that time period. And this movie definitely does that. You are catapulted right into 1960s. It's got this like small town type vibe. This movie really feels like a like it was written by Stephen King just because the story is very rich in characters and you automatically want to go back and read the book after you watch the movie because I guarantee you there's so much more to the book than what's in the movie but the movie is fantastic and I don't think a movie should have every single little nugget that's in a book otherwise all movies would be like really really long like way too long and you're you're trying to get that story compressed down to less than two hours and I think this movie does it really great. What I mean by that is the first half of the movie you're definitely going to be asking questions as you are supposed to. They don't spell out everything that has already happened so you're kind of putting the pieces together as you go along and then by the time you get to the end of the movie everything starts falling into place and then you're like oh I see what's going on now and now this movie is even more awesome. Now the creature in this movie, he's known as Sawtooth Jack. Visually, this creature is extremely striking. And he's so good that I can easily see him becoming like, like a cult action figure, something like that, even like a Funko Pop. Uh, he definitely has a little bit of a Sam vibe from Trick or Treat, uh, just you know, in terms of the head. 
but he's deadly as hell. Uh, there are quite a few kill scenes in this movie. Uh, tons of blood. There's one specific scene um, of the mini that really knocked my socks off. You know, just blood spraying all over the place. Uh, you're going to see like half head decaps. And j not just like quick, but just like ripping somebody's head off. Movie does not hold back, but also it's just beautifully directed. I could really see this movie becoming like a cult classic just because of how unique the story is. And I've been really wanting something unique, you know, because it seems like every story, even original stories, feel very familiar these days. I just reviewed Totally Killer, which I really enjoyed that movie. It's really fun. But that's a perfect example. It's a movie. Let's you can tell that they're sitting around a room and said, hey, what if we combine like Back to the Future with like a slasher movie? You know, I think that's how scripts are like formed these days. I don't know. But this story was so unique, so satisfying. And I love how everything kind of fell into place. And it just has a great ending. Also, there is a, a deputy in this movie. You're going to see him throughout quite a bit. Deputy Ricks. The actor that plays that guy is Luke Kirby, who is in Halloween Resurrection. I've seen him pop up in a few TV series uh, along the way, and uh, he stands out immensely. I didn't even like recognize him, and even his like his vocal delivery is like completely different than what it was in like Halloween Resurrection. And I love that because you know everybody picks on Halloween Resurrection. It's a horrible movie, but sometimes you'll have great actors in really bad movies and they're so good that they find a way out and they get really good roles and he is such a great actor like not just good great and you'll see what i mean he, he's definitely a standout character and he just feels like a good character in uh, a novel or something like that you know so guys i don't want to tell you anymore there's a lot i'm not telling you about this movie but just trust me it's very good. Stay with it because you're going to be scratching your head a little bit in the beginning. But man, once it all unfolds, fantastic. I absolutely loved Dark Harvest. Might be my favorite movie of the year. I'm not sure. So not surprisingly, I'm giving it a trap on an island. And this is definitely a movie I'm going to want to buy. It could be an annual Halloween watch for sure. We've had a lot of Halloween themed movies, you know, with Totally, totally Killer. Had Cobweb earlier this year. Then this one. There's been quite a few over the past couple of years, which is nice. So when you guys see this movie, let me know for sure. It's, it's going to be on VOD on Friday the 13th. Also, be sure to come over to Killer Flicks where we talk horror all day and every day on Fridays. We do fear for Fridays. Follow me at Drum Dums on my socials. Support me on Patreon. Buy me a coffee. And you guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a good day. Drum Dum out.